Hey everybody, welcome to Performance Anxiety. This show features filmmaker Marco Porcia, who's recently completed a documentary about the band Swans and Michael Girard. Not easy to do a documentary that focuses on a man who does not look back at his past, ever. Marco followed Swans and documented tours, practices, arguments, group hugs, and a lot more. He filmed so much, in fact, that there's enough bonus material for an entire second feature-length film. He interviewed many former band members and a lot of friends, like Jarbo, Thurston Moore, Lee Ronaldo, Phil Rieflin, Norman Westberg, and a lot more. Marco also tells me about this mythical box of vintage Swans live footage that Jarbo told him about, and then Michael actually discovered. He even let Marco use a lot of it for this film. So go to wheredoesabodyend.com, watch the trailer, and check out release information. Check out Marco's band, Let There Be Light. Follow us at Performance ANX. Subscribe, rate, review, and prepare yourself to be immersed in Swans. My name is Marco Porcia. I'm the director, producer, editor of the documentary film Where Does a Body End? I'm in the band Swans. Uh, you can follow. Oh, shit, what I'm gonna say? Uh, you can um, check out. Uh, go to uh, go to www.wheredoesabodyend.com for updates on the release. Um, you're listening to Performance Anxiety. And, uh, what else? No, no, God, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> the okay. worst I, part. I, I can make that work. Stuff. But, uh, <laughs> so, so anytime I talk about the swans, uh, the swans, every time I talk about swans, I'm, I'm a little intimidated because I don't know them as well as I've, I, and, and Michael as well as I know some of my other guests work and so i always get nervous and try to over prepare and try to listen to everything and it's not it's just not possible with that band that, that least, uh, yeah yeah you're right yeah because every album is so different from it, the next it really is it's i mean it it can be just so stark the change it, it's <laughs> it's pretty wild yeah but uh, you did a good job interviewing michael you weren't um Oh, uh, intimidated or, <laughs> or I like, was I, I really yeah. really was but I tried <laughs> not to sound like I was it was it was funny because I, I I really didn't expect to be able to interview him um Howard had said uh, you know a few months before the the, the interview mm-hmm. took place that um Michael was putting out a new Swans album and I'm like I know this band yeah I'm not real familiar with them and then he sent me a promo copy of the music. I'm like, I started listening, and I'm like, "This is amazing!" Like, and so he said, "Well, he's he's doing interviews now, so you know, I can get you ready." I'm like, "Yes, I, you know, I can get you on the list." I'm like, "Yes, yes, yes, yes." Yeah, in so, fact, I, I actually I remember now that um, I remember that he he had done very f- few interviews, and you're, I remember now that it was yours, the one that he did. Um, he doesn't do a lot of, you know, like audio interviews, I don't think. So I was surprised, uh, yeah, that he, he he had only done um, a few, and, oh, and wow. yeah, you were one of them. That was great. See, I didn't even realize that until right now. That's and yeah. what blew me away is that we started, and we ha- we started having some issues connecting. His, you know, we we're, we're doing oh. it through Skype like this, or, uh, yeah. and. Uh, and uh, he kept cutting out and getting bad connections. He couldn't hear me. And he, he said, well, he said, look, this, I think it's, it's on my end because my, my internet connection here is terrible. Let me, let's just do it as a phone call and I'll go outside and we'll. Yeah, yeah, I heard. I'm like, Whoa, uh, uh, okay. Uh, I bad, bad connection <laughs> where he lives. Yeah. And, and I was just, because I've had a couple people with similar issues and they just get pissed off and like, ah, fuck it. We'll do it later. I, I, I'm just, I'm not doing it now. Oh, okay. Sorry. He was just like, no, let me try to get this to work. And 
he went outside and he was outside in the cold for no he, I, I stepped outside just for just to yeah just to go for, for, to be more free and <laughs> man see everything <laughs> like, oh, it's cold here too everything having to do with swans is making every one of my guests go outside man yeah <laughs> but it, I, I was he he had only uh given 20 minutes and we ended up talking for over 40 and he had another yeah. interview to do immediately after, and I made him late for it. So, oh. <laughs> so I felt kind of bad, but I was like, man, he must have enjoyed so, it. My my interview with him was uh, six hours long. So <laughs> amazing. Uh, so uh, I want to get into to the documentary you're doing, but I want to know a little bit more about you first. I want to know a little bit more about your history because you've done this incredible documentary on. Michael Girard and Swans. Uh -huh. But I want to know kind of how you got to that point. Um, yeah. What did, were you interested in music first? Uh, film? What, what got you yeah. into this whole area? I mean, I'm, I'm a huge music fan, of course. So I've, um, and so having, uh, yeah, having, you know, well, let me start over. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's sort of my, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge music fan, of course, and, and I also play in a band. So music has always been incredibly important uh, for me. And, um, you know, having gone into a film uh, career and having, um, yeah, there was always, I always wanted to do something that was music related. Um, okay. I, 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 you know, I spent the last 20 years editing, uh, for TV uh, documentaries, um, you know, really great subject matters, but I, I, w I was always looking for um, something, a project that I could of my own that I could just call my own. Yeah. And uh, and having, you know, I, I did I did lots of little music videos um, in the past, and just wanted to get back into doing something, you know, related to music. And um, and I just um, when it came, you know, when it just hit me the idea of just doing the documentary, I just felt like that this could be the project. I felt really strongly that I could make this. I, I was the, I was the person that could do this <laughs> <laughs> so, because I had, I was a fan. I was, uh, you know, a long time fan as well, but yeah, I had the, the um, I think I had the tech expertise, um, you know, after the, and the experience of putting films together, documentaries together, um, for other people that I was ready to do it, uh, for myself. Okay. When did you start playing music? How old were you? And, and I've seen uh, I've seen your uh, your band Let There Be Light, and you're playing bass. Yeah. And some, and some strange keyboard with little baby arms on it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just, um, you know, it's more of a, I guess you could call it a hobby. I mean, it's uh, my a bandmate, my bandmate, Piero, uh, and myself. Um, and we're both, you know, we're, we're both uh, from Rome, Italy. So okay. we met here. So we're kind of like a, we're an Italian band in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we, we've only played we played for like 10 years before I, I i didn't i mean even now i don't really know how to play bass well i just go by instinct by mm -hmm. ear and just creating atmospheres um piero is the more uh, skilled talented one but yeah we, we've been playing for the last 10 years and we do shows um every so often Okay. So it's more of a fun, fun thing to do, but I get, it goes back to my love of music. Yeah, yeah. Is is Let There Be Light your your first real band you've been in, or were you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah, yeah. No, it's just for you know, really, just to to have fun. And it, the thing is, because of our jobs, uh, Pierre is an architect, and I myself, um, you know, working in TV, uh, and I we just. Uh, we can't dedicate enough time to it. Like, like we'd love to go out and tour. You know, we've put out like three, four records, and okay. but there's just no way that we can we, we could do that. You know, but it's been like <laughs> the 
a dream of, of mine of ours to, to do that. I under, I understand, and I've I've heard two tracks, and ah. I absolutely love them. I mean, oh, good. Thanks. Tele, uh, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, telepathine. Uh huh. Is a singer. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the 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 title of this of the track. Oh, right, Telepathine. Telepathine, yes. Yeah, yeah. That song blew me away. Oh, great. I love that. And it was a, it was live, which was... Yeah, yeah. It's like this... And, and I, I want everybody to go check it out. And because it's <laughs> like this electro shoegaze kind of sound. It's electro gaze, which That's sounds great. like a superpower, yeah. not really a music genre, but... If you like it, I'll send you our tracks. <laughs> oh, I would love that. That's it's. I'm serious. I've listened to it several, several times, and oh, uh, I will definitely add, include a snippet of this of a couple of the songs in this. So, okay, cool. everybody will get a, <laughs> get a little taste of it. And uh, huh? is that and is is your, the music available outside of just streaming it on yeah, YouTube? We, we, yeah, we have a band camp page so if mm-hmm. if you, uh, you you went to i think like let there be light uh, dot the band camp uh, you would see it there oh perfect i definitely want everybody to support yeah. that because i i, I yeah, love great. everything i heard now <laughs> let's let's get a little bit into the documentary here yeah. how how did you first decide that swans was a subject matter that you wanted to cover so, you know, when, when, um, Michael re- reactivated the band in 20, 2010, um, I, at first I was thrilled, but the other thought, the first thought that came into my head was that I would, uh, that I had to document, you know, the, the, this iteration of the band. I just, because there was, you know, even when the band split up in 97, I, I had an idea of doing a documentary even back then. But it was just not quite feasible at the time. I just moved to Canada, but um, I did go see their final show in New York. And, oh wow! Uh, and you oh. know what I what I thought was going to be their the final show ever when the band broke up in '97. Yeah. And little did I know that you know 20 years later I would have made a film. About <laughs> them, but but uh, no, so even back then I, I really wanted to do something. Be, and so when, when, um, yeah, in 2010, I just thought, okay, I'm going to pick up my camera and just start filming <laughs> as much as I can. So I had gotten to know Michael a bit, uh, when, uh, when he would come uh, to Toronto to uh, play with angels of light. And, uh, so, you know, we got to know each other and become friends. And, and so I started filming various shows uh, in New York, or I would tag along when I could at different, different, uh, shows. And, uh, I amassed, you know, I, sh- I filmed a dozen shows, so I amassed enough footage that I could put together you know, a live, sort of a live concert film. Okay. And, um, I think, and that was included with the, the Seer, um, DVD, uh, CD limited. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And so after I did that and I had, you know, just experienced, um, just the band's, you know, new, uh, sound, you know, live show. Um, I was just, you know, witnessed the power of just the new, um, yeah, incarnation of, of Mike, what Michael was doing and just w- being there and just seeing, how intense and powerful it was. Um, I just like, you know, I I just, I I just, one day I just realized I I was in a position where I could, I could have done more. I like, I wanted to do more and to tell the full story of Swans. And, um, I, uh, yeah, I, I, one day I proposed uh, my idea to to Michael and, uh, yeah, and he agreed. Now, how Um, hard was that to do? Because he's a guy who is really loath to revisit his older material. Was it difficult yeah. to, to pitch it to him and get him to agree to it? 
Um, no, no. I, you know, I just um, he was. I I knew I know he's very you know um, guarded with everything Swan. So I, obviously, I knew I had to do something something that was worthwhile yeah. and and strong. It could match the music, and um, you know, I, I just set about just kind of um, documenting as much as I could, and but at the same time trying to gather um, archive and just you know there wasn't a lot at, uh, online. Yeah. Um, so on. So once I w- was was really instrumental and, and incredibly helpful was Jarbo, who um, who was sort of the keeper of all the Swans archive <laughs> from the wow. 80s and 90s. And she, yeah, I, she was um, really generous. She she allowed me to use uh, her, all her, um, you know, materials that she had. And, uh, wow. and I started con- contacting um, different photographers who had taken photos of the band. Uh, and also there was, a, a lot, I got a lot of help with, you know, people donating their photos. Um, I didn't have a big budget at the beginning. So yeah, I just started amassing, um, material. And of course, you know, it's Swan Swan's stories started in 82. So I have to tell, uh, tell it, you know, that there is going to be, uh, uh, a story. The story is, is goes is for 40 years pretty much. Yeah. So I can't, you know, there's some people who just, yeah, the story uh, uh, goes on f- for a long time. So in order, you have to revisit the old stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so Michael, Michael is proud of it, but he doesn't, yeah. Like you, like he told you, he doesn't like to dwell on it. He just, you know, they're just, like um yeah. feathers that fall off a bird he told me once you know yeah he told me it was detritus which <laughs> detritus, <yeah. laughs> I was like wow yeah. that's pretty intense yeah yeah but he's an intense guy so now yeah. the uh, a lot of the, the older material that you have in the movie you got and i'm assuming you got this from jarbo tell me if, you, if that's wrong but you got the audition uh, i guess you would call it the audition tape that she sent to michael yeah, yeah, sh- that's right. Um, I got a lot of uh, material like that from her, and also, but one one interesting story also was that uh, I had a lot of uh, photographs and you know archival stuff, uh, but I didn't. I was lacking um, any video material. Like I was, I was you know I was filming the band now, so I was covered for the the this current uh, iteration for post twenty. Ten and um, but there was very little uh, um, uh, that was online and or that was around. But then early on, Jarbo told me that there was a, a box of archive box that she had collected over the years. Wow! Just hundreds of um, VHS tapes, like every kind of format, high eight, uh, you know, beta. Oh my that, gosh! That they that they. Um, yeah, that she had kept, and when when they broke up, uh, when Michael and Charbo broke broke up in '97, he took that box with him, oh. <laughs> and, which was a big mistake because she never saw it again. No one knew what happened to it. It got lost. Oh wow! And uh, so I was uh, I was gutted. I was like I was, yeah. uh, I was cursing. You know, I was just so hope. I was so, um, you know, it's the word, you know, just hoping that it, it could turn up sometime, but yeah. I would try and I tried to, Michael didn't know where it was and oh. no one did really. So I, you know, I kept, I kept working on the film and, and then all of a sudden one day in like 2015, I think I got an email from Michael saying, you know, Marco, I think I found what you're looking for. Oh, <laughs> and Wow. She, and so during one of his moves, uh, he had found a box and, and I was, yeah, I was oh thrilled God. and I drove down to New York and, and got the box. I, he wow. Trusted me. Now, is that where the, uh, like the circus mort footage came from too? Um, no, that one actually, that circus mort actually was, um, 
taken from this woman uh, who was a videographer at this club Maxwell's in New York. Okay. And um, she would document all the bands that went through there in the early 80s. Yeah. So she had an amazing archive of bands like New Order, Bauhaus, like, I mean, a- any band uh, you can think of who played that played there. And uh, Circus Mort was one of those bands. I think they were opening up for Bauhaus <laughs> that oh, night. Wow. And, um, but yeah, so I bought that footage from her. But but in this box was just when I when I got it and opened it. I mean, it was literally like an archaeological discovery. <laughs> um, it, I laid all the tapes out, and there was yeah, I counted at least there was a hundred tapes when I cataloged them, oh and I uh, just God. started. I started, um, you know, digitizing them and processing them and seeing what was good and what wasn't. And I'd say there was about maybe like 20 tapes that were amazing, really, really good. Yeah. And then um, also through Jarbo's um, archivist, I was able to get a hold of a lot of the soundboard recordings. Oh, she wow. So kept all that. So I was able to um, sync up uh, like really good audio to these VHS tapes, which some, some had, you know, really bad audio. Yeah, I'm um, sure. Sure. Um, um, so once I, I, once I saw this footage, um, I, I just, I knew like, you know, it's like, I knew that, that I had a film uh, then because I knew then I could tell this help, you know, with this footage, help tell the story of the early, um, history of swans, you know, the certainly the eighties and nineties period, there was tapes that went back to 83. Really. Wow. Oh my yes. God. <laughs> So I was really, yeah, uh, lucky that I got that material. <laughs> Were there any surprises in those films? Things that you weren't expecting? Um, um, there was. Uh, let's see. I mean, there's one amazing tape that was uh, basically like home video footage, uh, um, tour, you know, behind the scenes tour footage from 1987 oh, when. Wow. And they went to um, they, they went to Eastern Europe to do a, a tour. So there was there was um, yeah incredible footage there that I used a bit of in the film, and I I've also used more of it in one of the bonus scenes as well. But yeah, there was always um, this just seeing like it's amazing. I, I was actually blown away by how much archival footage was in the documentary. I didn't realize, you know, I, I didn't think. I didn't know that there was yeah. that much out there, and now knowing where it came from, I mean, that's that's just <laughs> blowing me away right now. Yeah, like I said, it was really um, after I got that box, uh, I knew that I could, you know, help tell the story the way I wanted to, and uh, and yeah, it's, it was really um, yeah, it was, all the pieces were kind of falling into place because you know when when you start, you don't really know what you're gonna get. You know, I yeah. was able to get. Um, I interviewed about 50 people for the film and, you know, I would just, I would just ask and I was really surprised by how many people would immediately say yes, you know, right away and who wanted okay. to, you know, I think especially, well, mainly because of the respect they have for, for swans and, right. and like, so a lot of, you know, people, there's some more, even who were a big part of the swan's history and immediately said yes and yeah. they jumped their well feed us and so uh, you know I would, every time I would go to New York I would interview people or go to London I would uh, interview as many people as I could oh you've got some amazing interviews too like just all right, Lee Ronaldo and Thurston Moore like you said yeah. uh, and you've got a ton of footage with Jarbo uh, Blixa yes. Bargeld um, uh-huh. and on, you know with the uh, unfortunate an unexpected passing of Bill Rieflin, you know, you've got a lot of him in there too. Uh, yeah. He was uh, so great. It was so sad um, just to, you know, to hear that he, he had passed away. He was, um, yeah, I remember, I, I, I remember going to LA to do interviews uh, there and I think it was 2016. And um, I went to interview Karen O of Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's and, and Devender Banhart and John Congo. Um, and then, um, but because Bill was in Seattle, uh, that was yeah my only pre- way to get there was literally uh, take a take a flight from LA 
to Seattle in the morning, go to his house and, you know, do the interview and then take a flight back to LA. Oh, wow. And so I still remember that, you know, uh, uh, that time, that day, you know, he was one of the nicest people I've ever met, you know, yeah. and yeah, it was, it was a great, he, he, he was one of the best interviews that oh. I did and he really contributed contributed a lot to the film yeah he really did there he's the the information and, and the, the stories he told were just amazing was there anybody that was kind of reluctant to talk about their time or their association with swans uh let's see i mean i i, I asked people some people you know uh, politely declined <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, um I mean, uh, Lydia Lunch. I mean, they were never really on the best of terms, yeah. but uh, I think Henry Rollins and um, yeah, I mean, I was hoping to get like Iggy Pop, you know, but he, he it was just never worked, quite worked out. Um, Nick Cave, I, I got close to, but <laughs> oh, wow, but uh, yeah, I, I got two bad seeds and instead, yeah, that is that's you know, that's pretty good, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to sneeze at that. So. Yeah. yeah. I, have, now, um, I, ha I have a question for you about early swans. And I, you, you may not have an answer to this, but it's um, something that's been really gnawing at me uh, ever since I had Michael on. Um, uh -huh. And like I've, like I've mentioned, every time I mentioned swans in a, in a podcast, I'm fairly new to the band. So when I had Michael on, I threw it out to... Uh, some Reddit users oh. and and said, "What what is something you would want to know from Michael? Give me some some listener questions." And <laughs> one person threw out this question, and it's been gnawing at me because nobody can really give me a definitive answer. There's hmm. a former member of Swans that's disappeared, Sue Hannell. Yeah, yeah. And the only person who's who knows any uh, just the slightest bit about it isn't even Michael because uh, I did ask him in the podcast if, if he has any information about her but Wharton Tears was the only ah. person I know who, who said he saw her a few times after she left Swans and she was you know heavy into some kind of an addiction she was like drinking cough ah. syrup and but he doesn't know whatever actually happened to her she just kind of vanished so I was just curious if, <laughs> if there was if she popped up at all in any of the research you did? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I knew of course about, about her and I, that was a question that I was, uh, I wanted to find out as well. And, and, and uh, it's funny you, you bring her up because one of the bonus scenes that I've compiled, uh, is actually called whatever happened to Sue Hanel. Oh, really? And, and I, you know, I, so I asked a few people like, um, Jonathan Kane, who was also in the first, um, line of the swans, right? It was yeah. Michael, Jonathan Kane and Sue Hanel. And, and also, uh, Bob Burt, who was the first, uh, Sonic Youth drummer. But again, they also had no, have no idea. You know, they think Bob Burt mentions that he, he did see, he would see around. He was, she was friends with his, um, girlfriend, I believe, but, uh, or worked at the same place. And, uh, he, he would see her when he would see her more and more she was looking a bit more and more um uh, let's say not in good shape and yeah, yeah. It, it was possible drug issues yeah he mentions how she went to his, uh, her apartment one time and and all she had was uh, a mattress or, or a chair and nothing else that's in exactly the, in the, the same thing wharton told me ah okay <laughs> yeah i mean so you know, either she 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 died, or you know she might have moved away, yeah. changed identity. It's uh, but it's surprising that no no one still to this day knows what happened to her. It's incredible. She just vanished, and yeah. Oh, man. oh so <laughs> so let back back to to newer swans. <laughs> there is some awesome footage of the band rehearsing for a. a recent tour and yeah. it, i mean you see him getting into arguments throwing guitars and all kinds of stuff <laughs> that was you don't ever get to see that kind of stuff from a band was, was that something that that michael was okay with in the from the beginning was he reluctant to show any of that kind of stuff no no he 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 yeah he he, he was okay i think you know he didn't want the film to be you know just like you know uh, 
uh, piece about how great they are, obviously. Right. But I, you know, he gave me free reign um, to do what I wanted. And but I, 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 I knew that when they were um, about to rehearse for the final tour, um, that I wanted to be there and film it. So, so I was able to go down there for three days, and and I tried to, you know make myself uh, small small you know just like a, a fly on the wall and right. just try and capture the more about the the, the rehearsal process because you know as you um, when you see them live they they uh, they will work a song over and over every single night until uh, the song will mutate and transform over the course of a tour wow. to something almost completely new or, or you know really different. So it was um, I definitely wanted to capture some of the yeah that process which I always find really interesting. Yeah, and um, like as well like when I went to Texas to film them recording the final album of that incarnation the glowing man but um but no but the, the argument that you see on the film i was just really lucky to have caught that on camera <laughs> because I, I was um i was outside of the the rear the room at when that happened and so i could tell like it was quite tense you know many times throughout and uh so when it when it all when it happened, I just kind of you know got out of the way and went, went outside and and uh, <laughs> but what later what I realized like my jaw my sort of dropped when I realized that oh my god I still have the GoPro camera in the room I had left that in there <laughs> recording oh. so when I when I, I went I grabbed the camera and, and looked back at the, the footage and. And sure enough, I had it on tape. So wow. I, um, yeah, I was, I was really glad to, to, um, to have caught that. And right away, I, I you know, I knew I, I had to use it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, cause it's just part of the process. Um, yeah. And, and I'm, it's, it's, it's one of the great things about Michael and about the band is it the honesty and that's a, yeah. a truly honest moment in, in the, in the documentary. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I was, prepared to fight to keep that that <laughs> in but but i didn't have to there was other things that that michael maybe objected to that yeah. that, uh, that i had to maybe take out but like silly things you know right. maybe he didn't like how he looked in one shot or but for that you never had any problem with that <laughs> so how how involved was he during the documentary process um well i um i showed him the the i i basically he let me do what I wanted, really, until I sh I showed him uh, my first cut, my first uh, rough cut, and I still remember I sent it to him in May of 2018, and uh, it was over four hours long. Oh my god! <laughs> and um, I was was pretty terrified of what he would say because <laughs> really seen anything. <laughs> I mean, I think. Uh, I had shown him uh, I, 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 at one point I, I went down and, and kind of went over like live material with him because he wanted to make sure I was using the, the best um, performances, especially yeah. audio wise. Yeah, so yeah, of course. just to save time, I knew what I what 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 would be um, yeah performances that, that would be uh, good to use. And um, but no, but then when I sent him the first cut, I, um, he just. Um, I think he, he said it was very good, but it was way too long <laughs> so, <laughs> for him. I thought that was funny, you know, for a band that does three-hour shows. Yeah. <laughs> One song is half an hour long. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but I knew it was too long. But at least it was a starting point. And yeah, exactly. One time, I I just went to his, to his house and kind of, we kind of, um, you know, he just uh, I. He gave me his comments, and it was easier to do it together. And, and so it was really helpful, constructive to um, just to hear his thoughts. And yeah. and he had really good suggestions, and, you know, just on using certain things, certain um, um, yeah performances. Or and uh, so then yeah, after that, I I went back, and it was it was really hard to just cut it down because there was so much material that I had. Um, I was able to get it down to like two hours and 45 minutes. And, um, but even then it was too long, you know, just to even get it into festivals. Yeah. So 
I had a, f- a couple of friends help me, you know, bring it down, like story editors. Um, so I was, <laughs> because at a certain point, I just, I, everything was so precious. I couldn't yeah. cut it down anymore. And then when someone else did, then I realized, oh, yeah, this could go, this could go. And it was a lot easier to get it down to two yeah. hours. But, yeah, sometimes you need that outside have, opinion. Yeah, but I still, I kept long version an extended version that's about two hours and 40 minutes oh wow that's that i you know that i'm that's what i was gonna put on the blu-ray and dvd okay how do you choose the songs that you want to highlight and i know you said michael wanted certain live performances but you know you you Mm -hmm. got some other studio songs that that go in and out throughout the entire documentary obviously since it's about the band how do you choose what songs was michael involved in that or was that all your decision that was no i think that was mainly mine you know i I would try and use what i what i had most uh coverage of so you know if i someone uh, i if there was a song that i i had really well covered i would tend to use that you know versus something that i didn't have a lot of footage of um and but sometimes michael maybe he wouldn't like the song so much like it happened on the no, I think really? The knot? The knot? <laughs> or... There's some songs that he just, you know, doesn't really like. So Michael not like some of his stuff. <laughs> you know? oh, he, uh, you know, he doesn't uh, like. The, there's a couple of songs uh, that he wasn't too fond of in the last tour, so I had to kind of stay away from those. Okay. Um, you know, that's but but it's yeah. It, I, so, but I was often thinking visually, and maybe. Like it was more of um, audio, sort of, he was more interested in, make sure, you know, the audio part. That's all, all that really matters for him. I mean, obviously, even doing the, f- having the film on him, you know, he's, he's pretty humble. He's, it's like, he, he never, you know, he appreciates the film a lot. And I, you know, I wanted to do it also as a sort of legacy, you know, just to sh- have something to show, you know, future generations and yeah. and one thing that the thing that most um surprised me um that i do i was really happy to see at all the shows that i would go at uh was yeah it was the amount of young kids that were that would show up and yeah. uh, and you see it in the film too where, where i interviewed some like teenagers 15 year olds yeah and, uh, one 13 year old kid who got his own his, he got his dad into this into school yeah. <laughs> that's amazing so, and you know, in a lot of um, uh, screenings uh, in the last year, that where the film played in various festivals, yeah, there was uh, there, in one show uh, screening in Glasgow, there was a girl that was so young, and I asked her how old she was, and she was like, she said she was twelve. Oh my god! She, um, she had just her parents had dropped her off, and and then uh, yeah, but oh so often, so you know, it's nice to see. Uh, this new um, sort of um, ge- yeah generation because the music has gotten even more difficult and intense than it was. So yeah. it was great to see um, so many uh, young kids, you know, really into it. So I was always yeah. often trying to capture uh, audience audiences. Just often you know, their faces <laughs> would be you know and kind of like wrapped in these religious, almost ecstatic. Um, yeah, you know, it's almost basic. like rapturous. It's it's incredible, yeah. and it's still good to to see you know young fans because with songs and performance, you know songs that are twenty thirty minutes long, performances that are three hours, you know you get these kids that are sitting there looking at their phones on TikTok and yeah. it's like a, they they <laughs> yeah. struggle to watch a thirty second video. Yeah, and so in the last you know seven years uh, that I filmed them was really like. Yeah, it was truly a, a, a religious experience, like really transcendental. And often I would, 
you know, I would be on stage filming for the whole two hours, um, two and a half hours, and I uh, would be, you know, exhausted and drenched at by the end, kind of like like the band. Yeah, <laughs> I know that. I, I uh, yeah, I mean, I I know exactly what you mean. Shooting a, a band live can be exhausting, and uh, yeah. it it's but it's it's an amazing feeling to to know you're capturing what's going yeah. on right in front of you. Yeah, exactly. And that's how I felt, uh, you know, when I would, when I was uh, filming the shows, I, you know, knowing the music and I would always try and um, anticipate what was about to happen and always try and be in the right place and, make, you know, and just to capture something that I knew might happen or would happen. And uh, that was always uh, a, a huge like reward. Like I felt like, yes, you know, I've, I, I was, you know, this is where I need to be. And uh, this is like, this is the place that I, that I, um, need to be, you know, right now in this world. I exactly what you mean. Capturing, yeah, this, this moment. So you mentioned that, you know, it's going out to festivals and on, but with the way things have changed with coronavirus at this point, festivals are closed, festivals canceled, theaters closed. Uh, has that changed? the distribution and release plans for the documentary? Yeah, it's too, it's really a shame because there was a lot of um, screenings lined up uh, now in April and May in Europe, and uh, it was really kind of ramping up, but now everything is on hold. Um, but at least it, it gave me time to, um, to f in the last month, I've been working on finishing uh, the bonus scenes um, and uh, working with my audio mixer and, and finishing um, getting the audio mixes done. And uh, I have um, I have over two hours of bonus material. Oh, bonus scene. wow. So, so that would be, you know, like a lot of the stuff the that I couldn't whole other fit movie. in. Like, uh, yeah, it's almost, it's pretty much a whole other film. So Man. between the two, you know, between the bonus scenes and the film itself, there's uh, over five hours about. Yeah. Oh man, I can't wait. I, I'm, so, I and it's scheduled, I mean, yeah, it's, it's scheduled to, um, uh, I have a sales agent, you know, so I'm, I'm, I, there is a distributor in North America, and so I don't know now their plans might be shifting, but it's hoping, I mean, it, so we'll have a release um, hoping in the next um, few months in, the, in North America and then hopefully in Europe as well. Good, good. I do have a question. I've always wanted to ask, particularly a documentarian. Obviously, you have permission to shoot the uh, the main subject of the documentary in yeah. this you've you also have clips of pink floyd and suicide and some other bands How, is it difficult to get permission to use those clips <laughs> especially with some with a band like pink floyd yeah that's actually that's one of the other things i'm dealing with now is this <laughs> getting all the clearances uh, together I mean in you know in a, some a lot of the times uh, you you can cite try and uh, cite uh, fair use mm -hmm. for um, some of these uh, things um, and so yeah I have someone who's helping me get all that together so yeah I'm, I'm hoping I can I'm, I should be able to get to clear all that stuff and <laughs> I have a lot a lot of other things to clear in the bonus scenes as well okay and, uh, but it's uh, you know even, even that's the part I don't I, I don't really like doing yeah <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> you know like, and um, yeah so <laughs> And, and so this this a lot of this was funded through Kickstarter. How was your experience yeah. with with that? Um, well, it was it was um, at the beginning. I, you know, I, I kind of started on my own, and then you know, I I, I, I realized that I, I I would need you know a lot more money. So yeah, I just tried doing Kickstarter, and um, I was afraid. I, I didn't know what to really ask for, but you know, I got the goal pretty much in the next, in the first two days. So it was, wow. you know, it was like, Oh shit, I, I should have asked for more. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, and, but then if you, if you don't hit it, then you don't get anything. So it was really, I was, it was really, <laughs> yeah. Um, Kickstarter is a little strange like that. And I, I know there's a few others like Indiegogo and all that, yeah. that you can, 
whatever you get, you get. So I'm grateful that to all the, I had about 650 people uh, who donated, who have been patiently uh, <laughs> waiting. With the, the film and I'm really um, I, I was you know I didn't really yeah I, I didn't realize how long it would take to finish but well um, when, once this is out you feel free to send this to them too <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, here's proof we're working on it it's almost there <laughs> yeah it's funny it's kind of a, a fitting that uh, today I'm actually getting the, the final audio mix for the film. So it's, awesome. I could say that it's finishing today. <laughs> that, is awesome. that is awesome. So a, a couple more questions. I know I'm keeping you a while uh, yeah. here. What really got you into Swans in the first place? What, what album was it or what, what event happened? Um, let's see. Well, I remember, yeah, I, I was probably 16, you know, and, and when I realized I was pretty much the same age as some of the, the, the kids in the film when I first uh, heard Swans. And I, I just started university in the States, and I was, uh, yeah, I was reading a lot. I was into, like, reading the the British papers, like Melody Maker. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, and um, so I mean, still remember... And one of the issues reading like the single of the week was uh, a screw. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> like, Time is money, bastard. Yes. Uh, so it was right around that e that time in '86. Uh, that's when I started university. Uh, that I, I just just reading that review, I just knew I, I had to have it. You know, and just even the packaging as well. A lot of people talk about how they were drawn into the band just by the visual. You know, the packaging of the of the, the records, especially the dollar signs. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, so those were the the first records. That I that I bought was uh, greed, holy money, and uh, you know it wasn't. It was really the he heavy period. I loved that those records, and then you know then subsequently, you know, just hearing um, getting Children of God when it, when it came out and loving that even more. Yeah. Um, but and you know some people a lot of you know there were fans that kind of um, dropped dropped out of, of listening to them when they after Burning the World came out, but I, I kind of, I stuck with them, you know, throughout, because I, I love Burning the World. And, I've heard and that then, a lot, uh, that, that it was, you know, and, and you actually mentioned that in the documentary a lot, uh, about how everyone involved in it was disappointed with it, but I know I I did a a, a show with a, a friend of mine who's a big Swans fan, and that was that was the first one he really got into, and he, it's his favorite album, is Burning World. Yeah, yeah, it's... um. It's a, a lot of fans, um, you know, one of favorite records, you know, and um, yeah, it's like Jarbo says, you know, it's a beautiful song, so even though the production just could have been just probably, it could, I want, sometimes you wonder uh, what it would have sounded like with another producer, you know, and yeah. I think Jarbo mentioned that they had actually, their first choice had been um, Flood, the producer, Flood, ah. who... Yeah, I think would have done an amazing job on it. That, yeah, that would have been interesting. Yeah, yeah, he, he did. He's you know, like uh, so many great bands. Oh yeah, I remember the first time I actually realizing his work was on uh, the work he did with Smashing Pumpkins on Melancholy. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So he did part. Of it. I don't think he did the entire thing, but I know he. Or maybe he did. I don't know. He would do like I, I just trying to remember like. Uh, um, I can't remember if he did um, uh, Nick Cave or uh, Wolfgang Press, uh, Curve. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess Curve. Uh, yeah, a lot of like those 90s bands in, in, yeah. in Ukraine. But um, yeah, the, you could, there's so many entry points into their, you know, into Swans that um, it depends. Funny, some, some fans are, or maybe don't even listen to the early stuff. They just. Um, like the you know this the newer the last four records you know post 2010 yeah. and 
other people don't are only you know stuck in that early period and you know but yeah it's you just have to kind of just yeah take it all and it's it's yeah like it's songs are a band that has always changed and unlike unlike other bands that have reformed like you know like pixies um or my Blade Valentine, you know, they they just play the the hits, all the old stuff. But but when Michael reactivated, that that's that was the last thing he wanted to do. You know, he just yeah. he, he he just created all new music that constantly got better and better, like even more dance and more more intense. You know, like yeah. these forty minute long pieces. <laughs> yeah, in fact, what what's funny is I, I was listening to um, to some of some Swans on YouTube. And I'm scrolling down and, and looking at the uh, comments, and the best comment I've ever seen on any video was on uh, "Bring the Sun to Saint Louverture." Yeah. Somebody said two dollars at one of these online jukeboxes at my local dive bar. Best money <laughs> ever spent. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a 34 minute track. And so everybody, wherever the hell he was at the time for, he was, I was listening to that for half an hour. I love uh, that. That's great. <laughs> and and uh, the beginning of the documentary is, is perfect. Michael saying that he's totally flummoxed at the fact that he even exists. And yeah. going into that conversation that he has, it's, it's funny because. I've, I've had those same thoughts and I know my wife and I've actually talked about it. It's, it's when we get into, you know, some, some mm -hmm. philosophical questions and some, some, yeah. you know, just, just some existential questions that, that you tend to get into at some point yeah. after a few drinks or whatever. But I've had those same That's thoughts true. and having, you know, hearing him say that at the beginning of, of the documentary is to me is the perfect way to start a documentary about this band. Yeah, and exactly, and that's how. Um, yeah, that, that I've had those as well, and and I, I always you know ask myself those questions. You know, why why am I alive? What why am I doing yes. this? You know, like what? How did I get here? You know, making this film even and and, and Michael's songs often actually have um, questions or questions. You know, uh, other tracks like "Why Are We Alive" or yeah. "Will We Survive?" And this one, um, you know, I had a few working titles, but Michael actually suggested this uh, title, which uh, I thought was you know really fitting and uh, one of my also favorite Swan songs from Great Annihilator. So. I thought it was really uh, appropriate, and because I, I, I don't want to make you know a traditional music doc, just just focused on the on, on the songs, you know, on the, on the albums. Yeah. But uh, I, and you know, songs is always something deeper, you know, existential, and um, it's you know like something that's hard to explain. But it's something. It's a band that people really love more than so many others. You know, I have thousands of other. <laughs> bands that i listen to but but swans have that place you know yeah. above every anyone else and so i think a lot of people feel like that it's and um so i just wanted to you know because michael's life like michael is swans and, and swans is michael so yeah. you can't extricate the two so i also wanted to you know, kind of show michael's life as an artist you know how as an artist he's persevered throughout his career um, and still 
yeah, it's like it's still going strong. Like yeah. other people who are more well known, like Nick Cave, you know. Yeah, and and um, you know, Michael has lived an extraordinary life. You know, and yeah, you know, being in an, an Israeli prison as a teenager. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> moving yeah, from, uh, moving across the world, hitchhiking from Germany to Israel. It's, I knew, um, yeah, I knew, I knew his his childhood story, and I, I wanted, I really, that was one of the things I really wanted to bring out, and to to have people, um, yeah, hear how, yeah, his childhood definitely influenced his worldview and his, yeah. you know, how he saw the world and his music, and uh, so yeah, well, there was, you know, it's a bit of, yeah, biopic kind of love letter. I guess it's definitely a labor of love. This yeah. film. You know, throughout, I would sometimes I would, you know, I, I would, yeah. You know, I also suffered some breakdowns, mental breakdowns. Just it's just such a yeah. huge project. But there's nothing yeah. about Michael that is not intense. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. That's when the I one interviewed, thing I've him, yeah, I was terrified too. I mean, <laughs> I, inter- I did all the interviews myself, but every time I'm, you know I'm with Michael, I'm always a bit. <laughs> yeah. it's it's definitely hard. I needed. Uh, luckily, I had a good uh, journalist who was who did a really good interview, so I was I was able to do the camera work and uh, interview him. So, but no, he's always been you know incredibly generous and, and kind. You know, when, when you meet him, he's very you know it's, it's complete opposite of what often people would think. You know, yes, and and I've only met him. Th- through the the one interview that I've done with him, but that's the feeling I yeah. got was that you know he's just his music, everything is is incredibly intense, but he's very yeah. kind. And one one, one thing that I, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, is also Jarbo uh, and her contribution to the band because her role was so important um, that without her, I don't think you know even he, Michael would have had the will to continue. Uh, several times uh, for sure so she was really such an incredible important uh, part of Swans and you know I tried to that was the other thing I wanted to make sure I brought out was um, Charbo's role in, in you know in the band and yeah. and her whole input and and, and uh, yeah just she was really and of course the, she was so helpful and instrumental and also helping me with all the archives. That yeah, and that's amazing. And the footage of her, especially on that last tour that that you have in the video, is just intense. Oh, yeah. It's I love it. Yeah, yeah, she was a really a force of nature. <laughs> yes. All right, so uh, I've got just a, one or two more questions I want to ask you, and and then I can let you have the rest of your evening. And I really do appreciate yeah. you spending so much time with me tonight. Oh yeah, no, it's they always go longer than you think. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you have a favorite Swans album? Oh god. <laughs> every every time I could say, you know, a different a different name, but yeah. I think because, you know, the the your favorite ones are always the ones when you grew, that you grew up with and to me, uh, I think I have to say I have to say White Light holds a really special place because I love that one. It was a time like 1990, 91. I was uh, actually living in Miami Beach with my one of my good friends who actually um, helped me produce the film and is a filmmaker and stuff. And um, yeah, and we were just kind of down and out. <laughs> and this, I had this ca- advanced cassette of White Light. Oh wow! And I just I had like put it on. I was in, and and uh, just. Um, just hearing like the power back in Swans after the burning world, mm-hmm. just hearing, hearing the production and, and the sort of yeah you know, orchestral symphonic feel, but really with really powerful um, drumming. Uh, I'd say, and and I loved, I always loved um, the artwork of yes. uh, the, yeah of Derek um, Thomas, and then just uh, yeah that whole area of white light, love of life. But also, yeah. you know, Amazing. I could say soundtracks to the blind as well because it's just such a beautiful album, and it was, you know, linked to that final tour as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I would say maybe those two. I, I, I'll pick two. <laughs> Where can people follow you so they, when when the documentary is released, they can 
purchase it and and help support this amazing uh, piece of art that you've put together? Um, yeah, it's um, well, I, uh, there's the website where does a body end dot com, and on there I I've, um, I'll, I'm updating, you know, uh, uh, f- I was updating, you know, uh, the film uh, festival release and the release of the film. So yeah, for the for the release and everything, I'll be updating um, on on the website. Okay. I have a Facebook page as well uh, for the film, and uh, so I'm sure people can find it on Facebook and on Instagram as well. Oh, great! And uh, but yeah, the f- website I'm gonna start updating more regularly. Wonderful! All right, this has been great. I am really blown yeah. away by <laughs> Swans. God, I mean, Wait. like I said, I'm a complete latecomer to the band, but. Yeah, I, yeah you've, you've done uh, you've done three episodes now in the last three, four months on Swans, <laughs> and it's been mentioned in several others. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, oh, that's great. Yeah. So I I, I was uh, yeah, and you mentioned that you were looking forward to see the, the the upcoming tour, and I was like, I was saddened that you now you have to wait even longer. <laughs> I know, I know, because uh, I was I was talking with Howard about how to get a media pass so I can photograph it. So it's, yeah. uh, we'll see. Hopefully things will calm yeah, down yeah. a little bit and then uh, yeah. it'll resume. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for spending so much yeah. time with me, man. I really do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, it was good talking to you. 